All right, so today I have with me Coop, and you're with Carrier Corporate. And uh, today we're going to be specifically covering the subject on infinities, but not just the top level things like, oh, it's very energy efficient, uh, it removes humidity, get better temperature control. But we're gonna do more of a deep dive into what makes this system the best of the best in the industry. So Coop, can you introduce yourself a little bit and Absolutely. tell us what you do? Yeah, so I'm Michael Cooper. I go by Coop, as you've heard here. Um, I am the platform leader for all residential indoor ducted product management. Uh, essentially what that means, it's all product management for any furnaces uh, to include boilers and oil furnaces, 80%, uh, 90% eff efficiency, as well as uh, air handlers, evaporator coils, and now geothermal as well. Can you explain in the lens of carrier, what is the goal of an infinity? Like what's the purpose of it? So the ultimate goal for an infinity system mm -hmm. is, is kind of twofold. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's, it's, it's kind of all encompassing of a, a comfort perspective, but it's also focusing on efficiency. So what is the best way to deliver comfort at the lowest cost or lowest energy consumption throughout the, the life expectancy of that equipment? Okay. These systems, um, what, what makes them different from a more traditional system? Because uh, in the carrier lineup, you have uh, the Comfort Series, which is a single stage basic system that's designed to be uh, a little bit more economic. And then, then you have a step up, which is the Performance Series. And um, it's a, a largely known, the one that, that takes the cake is the two stage. Mm -hmm. And uh, it also includes IntelliSense, uh, does a little bit better at dehumidification, a little bit, a little bit more energy efficient, stuff like that. And then you have the the highest end system, which is the Infinity series, and uh, it's variable speed and um, so on. But what what makes this system so much more interesting over the other system types? So with the uh, performance or even with with some of the, the two stage models it's it's easiest to explain it by considering a light switch mm -hmm. so with a light switch it's you go to the wall you physically turn it on or turn it off and those are your options it's either on or it's off uh, versus a uh, for example a, a light bulb that's a, a three-step where mm -hmm. you can change multiple steps the brightness of that light uh, that would be con comparable to like a two-stage piece of equipment mm -hmm. And then the best of the best would be the infinity, which from a variable speed perspective is like a light switch that has a dimmer attached to it, except for this dimmer is extremely smart and knows what you need when you need it and is able to deliver that at the lowest and most economical cost. So now staying on point on, on the carrier lineups, um, inside the infinity tier, there is there currently is two different types of infinity. You got the green speed and then you got the five stage. Um, can you give me a quick rundown on what the difference of those two are? Sure, sure. Yeah, so with the uh, five stage, uh, you essentially have five different stages of cooling options as it's uh, as the infinity system is learning the uh, the, the comfort needs of the homeowner, learning the, the system, uh, the home, the, everything surrounding that piece of equipment. It's able to step up and step down its cooling in five distinct stages. Uh, so you have five to choose from. Choose from. Uh, the difference with the variable speed is um, it will move in 1% increments all the way down to 20% of its total capacity. So whatever it's sized for, it can back off of that all the way down to 20%. And it essentially then would have 80 different stages. So it's able to pinpoint exactly what the need is at that given point in time based off of the load outside of the home, the request from the, the wall control by the, the homeowner, and it's able to adjust appropriately. And with that 1% increment, so when we're talking about five stages, when we're talking about two stages or even single stage, that's a very discernible difference. Uh, that the, the homeowner can feel the difference in, in how those are operating a little bit less with the, the five stage for sure. But when we talk mm -hmm. about variable speed, it's able to adjust down in 1% increments that's virtually undetectable from a homeowner. So it's still able to deliver that comfort, able to remove the humidity, mm -hmm. able to just create a, a more constant uh, temperature throughout the home at a lower overall efficiency mm -hmm. uh, uh, consumption. 
that's probably the the biggest question that we get from homeowners is like uh, they're considering an affinity and then what they're looking at is uh, do I want the green speed or the five stage you know because the green speed costs more and then you got the, um, the five stage that's a little bit cheaper you know the energy component is very clear the green speed is a lot more energy efficient than the five stage but we have homeowners that are not interested in like you know this it's already so much more efficient than their previous system they, they're not really caring about that and they're so so they're asking the question what is the comfort differences in between the two is it like better humidity control temperature control or is it really close where it just makes sense to go with the more budget friendly one yeah so that, that's a great question so the, the primary obviously with the infinity system both the five stage and the variable speed they're both fantastic systems they're both extremely intelligent made intelligent by the not only the equipment itself but also by that wall control which is a primary difference as we talk through things so there is a difference in wall control versus thermostat mm -hmm. uh, so the wall control itself is essentially like a computer on the wall that's learning as it's as it's operating so the longer a system is in place the more intelligent it becomes and is able to maintain a little bit better so back to the original question, uh, the, the, the primary difference between that five stage and the, the variable speed as far as a comfort perspective is concerned is truly dialing into what is needed to, to cool and dehumidify or heat for that matter in the, the heating cycle. Uh, so it's able to uh, adjust up and adjust down in precise increments to really lock in from a comfort perspective uh, so that it's not uh, one of the, the primary concerns even with a, uh, a traditional single stage is the uh, swing that the thermostat has so if you set your thermostat to 70 it may run until it's 70 you know or mm -hmm. may run until it's you know 68 degrees mm -hmm, before right. it shuts off and then waits until it's 72 to turn back on mm -hmm. again so that it's not just constantly turning on and off with the variable speed option, it doesn't have to do that. It's, mm -hmm. it's able to maintain and can adjust on the fly when the temperature, when the load on the house changes. So obviously throughout the day, temperature is different. It, it's, you know, in the morning, it's a little bit cooler than it is in the afternoon, maybe not in Texas, but in, in most okay. places, it's, it's a lot different throughout the mm -hmm. day. So it's able to adjust appropriately to what's needed at any given point in time, which all relates back to ultimate comfort. All right, so with the Infinity system, it's a communicating system and it's very different from a non-communicating system. You know, you have this central computer that's integrating throughout the entire system using various sensors that all talk to each other, that feed back to the computer, that then is looking at the indoor climate, uh, even outside uh, home patterns from the, from the homeowner, and all sorts of stuff and, and like then doing its magic from there. Can, can you just explain what is going on here? What, uh, you know, because th there, there's a lot that's going on behind the scenes that I think a lot of people are unaware of. With a, a fully communicating system like, like the Infinity system, it is, like I said before, learning what's going on in the home. And that's, that's learning the habits of the homeowner. It's doing that by recording when during the day at any given point in time if the, ther the thermostat or the wall control is changed from a temperature perspective it's logging that mm -hmm. it's not just logging the temperature the the customer going up and hitting the button to change temperature it's also logging what is the outside temperature what's the outside humidity what's the inside temperature and inside humidity how long does it take me if if the homeowner wants the temperature to increase by one degree or once uh, or decrease by one degree, whatever direction we're talking, it's monitoring how long it took to go one degree difference. And then it's transitioning that information into an algorithm that is stored in the wall control. So the next time that that happens, it's able to react a little bit quicker mm. so that it's able to, again, produce that comfort in a shorter amount of time with less energy used and really, you know, from a, a, an overall perspective, create that level of comfort. The longer it runs, the smarter it gets. Okay, so the, the way I just understood this is we have an infinity system that's designed, you know, I don't want to say generic, but it kind of is. So you got a generic infinity system that has to come into somebody's home and learn the climate and the environment that it's in because 
you know, the environment in Texas is very different from the environment in Tennessee. And so what it's having to do is figure out the difference in between the two and like close, it's closing the gap in the most efficient way possible at leading to the quickest uh, adjustments and things like that. Is, is that. is that how I'm hearing that? Absolutely. So it's, it, it actually comes out of the box similar to a, 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 don't really want to call it like the single stage, but it comes out of the box with kind of a blank slate. It doesn't know the, the habits of the homeowner. It doesn't know the space that it's in. But the difference between this system versus a, a performance series or a, a comfort series is it's able to actually learn where it's at and adjust on the fly to make sure that it's delivering that level of comfort. Okay. So every, I mean, everything that we do in this industry is, is really a custom job. So when we're talking about the, the comfort series or talking about the performance series, it really comes down to the contractor. How well did they size it? How well did they uh, you know, assess the duct work? Mm -hmm. How well did they listen to the customer to understand what their concerns, what their, I mean, they, mm -hmm. they may not know all the ins and outs of HVAC, HVAC, but they know what they feel and they know what they wanna feel mm -hmm. and they know what they wanna pay ultimately. Mm -hmm. uh, so as a, as a contractor, being able to take in all of that information and deliver a, a, a system that can truly learn the environment that it's in, you know, it's, it's more than just selling on its capability to dehumidify or its its capability to save energy. It goes a whole lot deeper than that. These these systems are incredibly intelligent and able to mm -hmm. to truly deliver a, a world class experience. Right. For homeowner. You're basically saying that there's there's two parts to the equation, and um, so you've got the product itself that is really designed uh, to to deliver ultimate comfort. However, you have the installation and you know everything else on that side of the equation that has to also have all those boxes checked as well so in order to uh make let's say the infinity communicating system work is you know all the boxes have to be checked on both sides of the equation i can't it, you can't re rely solely on the product that's that's for sure yeah okay gotcha now whenever you were talking about uh the wall sensor so one of the things that we have to do is um, we have to update the thermostat. And so whenever we set up an Infinity, we have two different ways to do it. We can either connect it to the homeowner's Wi-Fi or even we, we have an Infinity in our training room that we use for you know training purposes. And sometimes we'll go ahead and set up thermostats in there. Um, and then you also have uh, an SD stick that we can, you know, um, plug into the thermostat and update that way. Um, but with updating it, does it recognize where it's located and maybe be able to shortcut the learning process? Like, let's say we, we connect it to Wi-Fi. It knows that it's in Houston, Texas. Uh, could it go like, Hey, um, we, we have a bunch of infinities in Houston, Texas. We know how it can kind of act and shorten the learning curve that way, or is it just like blank slate every time because every home is just different, so just let it learn. Yeah, so when we make updates to, to the, the firmware that's, that's in the wall control, um, uh, just to, I guess, unpack a little bit further, the best possible path forward as far as that update is concerned is the over-the-air updates because then okay. it doesn't take a you know physical interaction with that wall control um, and and you know some of the updates work it's it's just like updating your phone mm -hmm. uh, you have the option to turn off the feature that allows it to automatically update or if you turn it on you know that you don't have to worry about you know it, it, is my phone up to date the most or you know is it am i waiting until i start to see issues before i actually hit that update button with the wall control it's the same thing and then to your question when you are connected from a Wi-Fi perspective, it does know location. It does so it's mm -hmm. it's pulling climate data from the area that you're in. So if it's pulling weather data, it knows humidity. It know it knows what's forecasted as far as humidity is concerned, as far as temperature is concerned, and it builds that in. Like I mentioned before, it when that customer went to the, the thermostat or the wall control and hit the down button because they wanted it cooler by one degree, it was taking in all of that data, the, the mm -hmm. snapshot data of at this temperature, at this um, relative humidity, outdoor and indoor, it took me X amount of time at X amount of time to go down by one degree. 
it's learning that from the weather data that's coming in so it can react ahead of time. So mm -hmm. if the first time around it took 45 minutes to, to drop the temperature because it's super hot outside to, to drop the temperature mm -hmm. by one degree, it's going to come on a little bit sooner at a lower rate of speed for that compressor so that it can still achieve that in a shorter amount of time. Okay. So what you're saying is like, it's going to get ahead of the curve. Let's say you have uh, a rainstorm coming in and it's just going to make everything a lot more humid. So it might go ahead and start dehumidifying uh, before that happens just to get ready for it. Or is it? Yeah. So it, I, I wouldn't necessarily go to the extent of, of saying that it's going to react ahead of time as far as something like a mm -hmm. rainstorm coming in, but definitely from a temperature perspective and a, a relative humidity perspective that, that uh, before the human body can start to really feel that it's getting sticky, the system gotcha. knows based off of data that it is actually getting to a point where that's going to create a concern and we'll start to wipe that out so ahead of time. So it's not going to be like overly uh, proactive because right. it's trying to maintain the perfect indoor climate possible at any given time. That's so, right. Okay. That makes a lot more sense. Perfect. Now I do get um, questions from customers uh, and this is a, a very common question. Can we use two infinity thermostats on the same system for zoning purposes? From a zoning perspective, it's it's really one main wall control. So it, it, it would essentially be like putting multiple computers on your wall. It's not really cost effective for sure, uh, but you would use one main wall control and then the smart sensors that go along with it that are mm -hmm. communicating data back from a zoning perspective. Yes. So it's still just one main hub, but the, the zoning, the smart sensors that go in the different rooms, which mm -hmm. you can still adjust. Uh, there's a couple of different versions. There's one that are just a, a screen that tells you what the temperature is, and the homeowner has the option to adjust those temperatures directly from the homeowner app, um, or they have the, the version where you can adjust temperature up and down as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because we, we typically use the one that that allows you to adjust the temperature up and down, and it, and it works very much like a normal thermostat. But, yeah, at the end of the day, um, you cannot put two, you know, computers together and it just ends up being a conflict of interest like right. they can't really compete against each other right and that would be on the same system mm -hmm. for so, right. if, so if you system. have multiple systems by all means you could utilize more than one uh more than one carrier infinity uh, wall control but mm -hmm. uh, just one per system if that makes sense let's say a homeowner is wanting to make their house really really smart you know and uh what all sensors can tie into this uh the the infinity so should i call it the infinity thermostat or should i just call it um the the wall monitor uh, infinity thermostat wall control wall control yeah uh, it's it, it's the same thing infinity wall control is, is yeah. really what it is okay so the, uh, the infinity wall control yeah. is, is the the proper term okay yeah so uh, i mean to that point all of our equipment from from carrier has lots of sensors mm -hmm. uh, so uh, when we talk about the comfort series and the performance series so if comfort series lots of safety sensors mm -hmm. uh, lots of uh, items there to to maintain a, a threshold of operation that doesn't allow the system to harm itself uh, then when we step into the the performance series with intellisense we've started to add in some mm -hmm. some extra features that uh, really create a a, a great uh, environment, you know, from a, a service perspective, giving homeowners the comfort, you know, the, the peace of mind to know that their equipment can be monitored and, and you know, the, the contractor can understand what's going on in a system before coming out to, to save on nuisance uh, calls. But then with the Infinity, again, quite a bit different. Uh, so we have all of the, the baseline as far as the safety sensors are concerned. But with Infinity, we also, so like, like we mentioned, it's, it's learning. It needs a lot of points of, of input from the system so that it can truly learn what's going on. So, you know, starting with that, that condensing unit, we've got suction and liquid line transducers, mm -hmm. which essentially are measuring, it, it, it's essentially like leaving your gauges directly hooked up to the system at all times and your gauges are directly mm -hmm. communicating to the, the wall control. So it knows from a pressure and temperature perspective, as well as the overall performance at any given point in time in relation to those pressures and temperatures. Mm -hmm. uh, additionally, from there, uh, we've got thermistors throughout the, the coil. We were, we're taking, in, uh, taking account of ambient temperatures. We're taking account of coil surface temperatures. Um, and then you know, from the inside perspective, uh, we have um, uh, RPM sensors, uh, so it's the blower itself mm -hmm. is able to determine the ductwork that it's hooked up to. Uh, so it runs, uh, in its initial commissioning, runs tests to understand 
what's the static pressure what's the uh, the temperature of the air what you know what are all of the the different uh, components that are uh, working against my ability as a system to provide that comfort mm -hmm. so that it can make adjustments on the fly to to deliver that comfort yeah i got it kind of, it's it's kind of funny i got an interesting story on that one um so last year in uh 2023 um from the folks in texas you know exactly what the summer of 2023 was uh just completely brutal we had over 100 days in triple digit um temperatures and it was just it was terrible but um we had a um, a person that we installed an infinity for and what we wanted to do with them was to do a two-step process was the ductwork was all you know it wasn't necessarily like way under size or anything like that but it, it was off you know for sure and this was getting close to um the end of july right so our guys they're exhausted you know, uh, I can't put them in a hot attic, 140, 150 degree attic for very long, um, you know, because it's going to really start um, hurting their health. And then from there, it's going to be hard to continue working on future or, or on the next day system uh, installs and things like that. So we have to we really had to safeguard our installers health uh, last year. So what we wanted to do was a two step process on this infinity job. One, because they were down, go ahead and, and put the system in, and one month later, go ahead and do all the modifications on the ductwork to make it correct. And um, what we saw was the system did work, but it would run for um, about two hours, and then it would show off, shut off for two hours, then turn on for two hours, then shut off for two hours. So we had to dive into the error codes and everything else. And what we found was the plenum was too shallow for it. And and it was so smart reading, you know, the temperatures of the evap coil, what's going on with the blower, all that other stuff is saying, hey, if I keep pushing the air like this, um, either A, the coil's gonna start freezing up, something's gonna start going on, you're gonna start damaging equipment. So I'm going to go ahead and turn myself off, throw an error code, Let's work on getting somebody else out here until this, this problem is corrected. So it was smart enough to know saying, hey, you're pushing me too far past my limits. Let's go ahead and fix this problem. And it was very, it was very interesting to watch. So from there, we had to do the duck work ahead of schedule right. to, to get it working right. So yeah, so we were crossing our fingers on that one, hoping not to do that. But it, yeah, it was kind of interesting. Yeah, that, that's the beauty of these systems. At the end of the day, it's, it's an investment in your home. And it's it's really nice to know that if you're if you're going to to make that investment of in your home i mean how many other appliances in your home do you know that are smart enough to say all right this this is too much we need to settle down for a bit mm -hmm. i'm going to i'm going to give you a little bit of comfort and just to give you some time buy you some time to get somebody out here but uh, yeah something's got to change i mean it's it it truly is an investment and unfortunately for the hvac equipment as everybody is aware at this point it's it's one of those that's out of sight out of mind it's one that kind of sneaks up on you mm -hmm. you don't realize how much you need it until you don't have it so it's it's something right. you really want to protect yeah and if i put any other system in there it would have tried to fight through it and Absolutely. then we would be coming out there with frozen coils or, or whatever maybe it would fight through it for the next you know five six years and then we're replacing ecm motors or whatever so a more traditional system is going to do its best to just like you know turn on let's let's just make this sucker work you know and infinity was just smart enough to say like dude i'm, I'm not gonna throw this out the window basically right. so right yeah and it's it's again that protecting itself against the environment that it's in and to your point you know you, you go out five or six years later a homeowner remembers when they had to spend you know it's still an investment whether it's a comfort performance or infinity series mm -hmm. it's an right. investment in your home and if your investment has to be made every five to six years because it was pushing through it was yeah. gung-ho that that's something they remember and and unfortunately that tends to come back to uh, the manufacturer and the installing contractor it was either the the homeowner feels that the installer didn't do it correctly or the manufacturer made something that was was not fit for right. for my home and they you know have a, a negative connotation for that product and, mm -hmm. and really it's it's about you know again it's 
extremely important to make sure from a sizing perspective, from a ductwork perspective, that you're looking at the full picture. Mm -hmm. And it's really hard to do in, in your, your situation last year. Uh, also, I was there for uh, 2022 mm -hmm. when we, that was kind of a record time frame as well. We had 60 plus days mm -hmm. of over 100 degrees and I think it was like 52 days of no rain. It was a lot of yeah. it, really hot and really dry. Uh, but anyways, you know, at, at those points in time, from a contractor's perspective, you've got lots of customers that have lots of needs. You mm -hmm. know, a lot, you know, systems that are, are uh, crashing out. So, you know, they're they're not performing like they should be. Uh, so it's it, it's really easy to miss some of the the key steps because of how truly busy you are. But it's extremely important, regardless of of what. Uh, what tier of equipment is being installed, it's extremely important that you maintain your basic business practices of making sure that the equipment right. is designed appropriately. So I 100% agree um, with this because um, what, what you essentially just said was you should still use the same standard on an Infinity as you would or as you should on a Comfort Series. That's right. Because um, the right way to look at an HVAC system, if you want the full life out of it, if you want it to be energy efficient, if you want it to deliver the comfort that, that it should be, you have to look at it like a complete system, meaning like you can't separate the equipment from the home, from the ductwork, from everything else. Because you also have to understand the way I kind of look at HVAC is it's a lightweight remodel, um, very lightweight, but every home is, is different. And so I can't do a cookie cutter solution for every single home because it doesn't exist. Every home is different and that whatever piece of equipment that we go back with has to be right for the home, for the duck, for everything. So it needs to all tie together um, or else it's just not going to work right. And um, not only that, it's not going to be as comfortable. You're going to keep paying high utility bills. And not only that, you're going to just start burning up stuff and you're going to cut into the life of the system. Right. So you should never, you should never look at it like equipment only. So it should always be as a complete system for your home. So yeah, I'm big, big fan of that. That's right. So we do have some homeowners that ask us, do uh, you know the the wall monitors or it, there's any sensors that we can tie into it that does any motion detection? Yeah. So so currently with the Infinity Stat, <clears throat> that's that's something that mm -hmm. that's kind of gained in popularity from a um, ductless perspective because they have you know room sensing capabilities. Currently with the uh, Infinity Wall Control, uh, that that is not. Uh, an option mm -hmm. um, for room occupancy. Uh, again, from a you know maintaining overall comfort. Uh, that's not to say that it, it's always going to be that way. We're obviously always mm -hmm. looking for ways to innovate further and really tie it into where it makes sense. So again, instead of it being like a an on off, like I walk into the room and now you should turn on a little bit stronger. Uh, you know, and instead of taking that approach, we're really looking at what ways does it does it make sense to incorporate. So that again, comfort is maintained permanently. Yes. Yeah, so, so basically, what you're saying on the infinities, it's just it's more energy efficient to keep it the way that you like it, you know, all the time. Right. All right. So we touched on this a little bit earlier about looking at um, you know variable speed systems, communicating systems as a complete and total systems, where you can't can't leave out the ductwork or the sizing of the house and and things of that nature. So now like, let's let's move over to ductwork a little bit. What is what is the importance of ductwork when it comes to these systems? Your ductwork is is your medium of transmission for comfort for the homeowner. So it, it it's it's one of those that usually gets looked past. This again, especially in the midst of a really busy time for for different contractors because of weather related uh, occurrences. Uh, but the ductwork is really the heart of the system. It's the, it's again that that delivery medium. So if it's if it's not right, it doesn't matter. You know, if, as a manufacturer, we could develop the best of the best mm -hmm. of the best system in the world, something cool that you've never even seen or heard of before. But if it's not connected to the proper delivery medium for that comfort, it's never going to perform as we intended it to. Right. So through the development process of these products, you know, in the installation manual, and you know, uh, contrary to popular popular belief, 
those installation manuals aren't actually knee pads when it's muddy outside. They actually do contain some really pertinent information in there. Uh, but you know, in those installation manuals, it, it's very specific from a ductwork perspective. I mean, we've got blower curves. We've, you know, all the, all the different components that really make up how this system was designed and how it's supposed to be installed. We understand mm -hmm. that every installation is, is a custom job. So, you know, it's not just a matter of what can I get to fit back in the space that I just created. It's what happens when I put a new system in the space that I just created to the rest of the system? Mm -hmm. Am I truly delivering what I promised the customer at the kitchen table? Mm -hmm. Right, right. So whenever the system actually calculates static pressure for ductwork, um, now on some of the stuff that I've heard about it is it will actually pressurize the ducts at some point during the day and do um, calculations with the ductwork and stuff and static pressure is that is that right is that how that works so yeah actually i mean it, it does that as it operates but you know right at the initial start so when you first hook up that system mm -hmm. you, you go through that that uh, period while you're cleaning up tools and moving stuff around you, you it's going through its its cycles that's a, that's exactly what it's doing it's learning all right i'm fresh out of the box i i don't know where i am let's let's put our feelers out there and see what's going on how how well am I able to move air at different levels of blower speed? How much air am I actually moving? Mm -hmm. So it's 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 learning the duct work in that way. So it, it pressurizes at that time, but then as the system is actively running, that's that's how it's able to alert uh, about a dirty filter, for example. Mm -hmm. um, it it understands all right now. I have you know it, this isn't normal. I have a restriction. Something's something's going on. So it's able to uh, to tri instead of it just being on a timer, it's able to trigger we've got an issue, we've got a blockage. We're, right. we're not moving air like we once were. Right, all right, so let's pivot a little bit. Uh, we can still stay on ductwork, uh, but let's talk about zoning some. And uh, if we look at zoning, what is the difference in between zoning for an infinity versus zoning for a standard system? So that, that's a great question. So with the zoning differences between communicating and non-communicating, uh, there's a, a multitude of differences. There's a reason that there is a, a communicating version versus a non-communicating -communicate, version. Again, with the Infinity system, <clears throat> again, the wall control being that hub of information, it needs specific inputs. So it's it's learning about the space. It's learning about those individual zones. It's learning, you know, if, if, if I have a wall control in the master bedroom and at night I like it to be significantly colder than the rest of the house, it's learning what that temperature is, what time that, you know, what time I'm mm -hmm. expecting it to be cooler like that, how long I'm expecting it to be, what's the weather outside like at, at any given point in time, how do I, how much do I need to work? Mm -hmm. And how do I do that more effectively and more efficiently? Uh, so it's, it's quite a bit different versus again, we talk about the, the on off switch, the light switch, that would be the non-communicating version. So it's either on or off and it, it doesn't really it's not learning about the space it's reacting to an input from the mm -hmm. user yeah and that makes sense because um <laughs> whenever we zone a home everything has to be infinity so the zone board uh the damper zone dampers all of it has to be uh infinity so it all is able to talk to each other right so, okay. yeah and there's there's lots of different you know from the non-communicating perspective mm -hmm. as far as dampers are concerned uh, there's there's power open spring close mm -hmm. there's yep. power close spring open bunch of and different you don't options. have the option really to open it a little bit mm -hmm. you know if you if if, if you want to bleed off a little bit of air into a, a different zone in the home it's it's either all or nothing with a system like that so and and it does it's not mm -hmm. able to do that so that's that's one of the primary differences mm -hmm. there yeah so on these systems can we run a bypass on them you, with an infinity system uh -huh. you shouldn't run a bypass and and because the system is smart enough to know how much is it, how much each room each zone is needing as far as uh, the output of the system is concerned it's able to adjust appropriately it's able to partially open like a like i just mm -hmm. mentioned to partially open a damper which sim is kind of similar to a bypass uh, but without the um, discomfort if you will of a bypass you don't want to recirculate air back into a system that's calibrated appropriately for the whole home mm -hmm. okay so would we have to have um, a dump zone or anything in a house if we wanted to for, for zoning homes or anything like that? So the system monitors that on its own. 
and okay. we'll we'll dump into a zone like like for example you may have the master bedroom that you want at 67 degrees and your living room downstairs you want it to be at 70 degrees the living room is approaching 70 and a half degrees but the upstairs bedroom is at 69 degrees mm -hmm. <clears throat> so there's a, a significant amount uh, it's it's a smaller zone for that master bedroom there's a significant amount of call or of load for that room so it's going to open that damper wide up but it also recognizes that the living room is still above that set point of where where you know the, the design temperature is or where the required temperature is so it's able to open that damper a little bit which creates a bit of a, a dump zone if you will okay. into that space so that it's it, it's doing things appropriately so that it's not gotcha. significantly overcooling or allowing for other rooms to uh, get outside of the realm of where they need to be. So so <laughs> when zoning, do most homeowners, should they be looking at it like a, for a better comfort standpoint where you can better control the temperatures and humidities zone by zone or they should they be looking at it more from an energy efficiency play? Yes, the answer is yes. So <laughs> I mean really to, to break that open, uh, you know, from a from a zoning perspective, zoning is really designed for, again, like we mentioned, all all homes are built a little bit different, and that goes all the way down to the types of materials that were used to construct mm -hmm. the home. Right. Number one, but number two, also location, uh, orientation of the home is it is it west you know westerly facing? Is it you know what's the situation? Where's the the most infiltration of the sun? So you're going to have areas of the home that are the load is a little bit different. So mm -hmm. unfortunately, we can't just design a a piece of equipment to cool a box mm -hmm. uh, like a refrigerator where right. everything is really the same temperature. You have one set point and and you're good to go. Um, obviously, that's changing now with new refrigerators, mm -hmm. but homes are like those newer refrigerators where you've got different areas of the home that you have different requirements for it. And to combat that, again, you want the, the room to be a little bit colder at night when you go to sleep. Well, if, you know, husband and wife are, are in the same room and husband wants to go to bed, wife wants to stay downstairs and watch TV or vice versa, you don't want to freeze out the person that's downstairs just because you want it to be colder upstairs in your bedroom. So mm -hmm. that's one of the, the pieces that zoning can offer. Um, but then, uh, you know, additionally from there, um, rooms over a, a garage, uh, you, you have a, a, a unconditioned space that has, you know, infiltration of heat from multiple sides of, mm. of that room. It's naturally going to be a little bit warmer. Uh, rooms on the second floor, they're closer to the attic where, uh, again, unconditioned space with as you were mentioning earlier, 140, 150 degree air, it's naturally going to have to combat against those temperatures. So zoning gives us a way to be able to maintain different levels of comfort. And then additionally with that, with that infinity zoning control, maintain efficiency and comfort at the same time. So if we have a homeowner and they're, they're looking for four zones in a house and, uh, you know, obviously the system has to be able to work at 100% working capacity, how, how, what would be the ideal, I guess, uh, load ca capacity for each zone or, or how, how would that be properly set up there? Yeah, so that's, that's a great question. So r really to start, that kind of depends on if we're talking about the non-communicating or the communicating infinity zoning control. Obviously with the infinity communicating zone control, the smallest zone, if you will, again, it, it'd be nice if, if each of those zones were, were you know, 25% to make up that full 100%. They were evenly distributed. Unfortunately, it never really works that way. So, you know, it, as far as zoning is concerned with the infinity system, your smallest zone has to be able to maintain whatever the lowest CFM output is of mm -hmm. the blower and the lowest capacity of that outdoor unit. So, you know, if, it, if, if we're saying that we can get down with that variable speed to 20% of its mm -hmm. total capacity, it has to be able to handle whatever the system is operating at from a CFM perspective at 20%. So mm -hmm. it's significantly less than, than some of the other zones. And then additionally from there, the Infinity system is able to monitor as, again, as the system is running, <clears throat> how much capacity is needed for that outdoor unit to supply that one zone and can back the blower down to where you're legitimately, mm -hmm. you know, if it's one zone that's calling, you're legitimately sending the right amount of, of cooling to that specific space and not to the others. And then as, as other zones come on, it's able to speed the blower up. 
and then speed the outdoor unit up as well to maintain specifically what's needed in each of the different zones of the home. So, so how does it know um, the capacity per zone? Is it is it just looking at static pressure internally, saying okay, this zone can only ha- it is you know it's at 0.5 now, we're at ideal uh, capacity, and I'm at 20% here, and that's that's the ideal spot. Or is it something that the contractor has to program? Uh, on installation. So no, this this is a part of the the original commissioning of the system as we mm-hmm. were talking about earlier with the the pressurizing of the system. It's it will close off dampers and figure out what the, you know, what the overall static pressure is in in the totality of the the total static pressure if you will is in the ductwork when one zone is open versus mm. you know and it will test each zone in that way and then test every combination of those zones thereafter okay and it learns all of that on its own that's nothing no input from the contractor whatsoever it's doing that on its own yeah that's that's super cool so these systems are are you know really good at dehumidifying now I have been told over the years from many, many different contractors that variable speed uh, communicating systems do not dehumidify as good as a two-stage system. And the reason for this um, was they would say that the blower would run essentially all the time and it wouldn't allow the evaporator coil to drain all the water. So it held water uh, throughout the long run cycles and because of that, it couldn't get rid of the, the humidity and couldn't dehumidify. Now, with the two-stage, it actually has a cycle time turning off, you know, um, so it has a longer time to drain the water off the coil. And so I'm just wondering is, and like, and their examples to this was early days in Linux and things like that, because they made a really big push into these are great at dehumidification, things like that. And then later on, they got a black eye from it. And then they actually had to pull that marketing, um, you know, away. And so, you know, I don't know if that used to be a problem, it's been fixed, or, you know, can you just help hit on that for me? Absolutely. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, to that point, with the infinity system, we, we market ideal humidity, which is the, mm-hmm. the moniker for uh, the, the infinity system, which is 400% better. Mm. Um, than our single stage non-communicating equipment. It's 400% better at removing humidity than uh, than those systems. Uh, so, you know, with that being said, <clears throat> you know, obviously I can't speak to speak to Linux and, and other manufacturers. Right. As as we go through the development process, as far as our products are concerned, we're we're, we're learning what's working. We're we're learning, you know, how to to work through problems. Um, and, and we're designing for a, a multitude of, of different environments that it's potentially going to go into. Um, and I, I feel that oftentimes, as far as you know, the, the likelihood for a contractor to want to stick with a two-stage versus a variable speed, you know, sometimes there, there are things that you're really comfortable with and things that you aren't as comfortable with. And you, you'd probably be better served to, to focus on the ones that you are because you can speak you know, more wholesomely about that particular product. As we've transitioned through the process of, of introducing the uh, variable speed, the in- inverter driven systems, they've gotten obviously better and better as you know, we've, we've developed new bells and whistles into them, uh, which is what allows us to be able to say that, you know, it's, it's capable of, you know, removing 400% more humidity than, than the, it's non-communicating version. And with that being said, you know, it, it does it does run more frequently, but the byproduct of that and it, it's running more frequently at lower you know lower speeds both of the compressor mm-hmm. and of the the blower motor itself to maintain you know a, a more neutral temperature throughout the home. Uh, but the byproduct of that is it's constantly removing humidity, unlike coming on and going off. Mm-hmm. Coming on, it's it, you can only remove humidity when the system is running. Mm-hmm. So if if the if the thought with this is that we're not removing as much because it's staying on the coil, that's that's not the case because again the the compressor is most of the time running as well. Mm. So <clears throat> can we touch on the the cycle times on these systems? Do do these these systems ever uh, do Infinity systems ever cycle off like they, completely? You know, for sure they they do. Uh, so uh, again, the the way they're designed is you know. When we think about, like, like we mentioned earlier as well, when we think about the, the single stage system, 
there's a in the thermostat on the wall there's a there's a swing in temperature you know if you mm-hmm. have it set to 70 it may get to 67 or 68 before you know it, it turns on in the heating mode and then will stop once it gets up mm-hmm. to 72 just to stay somewhere you know in the middle 70s where you want it we, we've got a swing so with the infinity system it's a much more narrow gap mm-hmm. of of swing with the temperature yes. so it's less than half a degree wow yeah so it's it's staying very precise to that temperature so in order to accomplish that and and, and what has been proven as far as you know energy consumption is concerned and overall comfort is the longer that system can actually stay on, even if it's at a fraction of, of the, the design capacity, the more capable it is of maintaining that steady state temperature you know, mm-hmm. throughout the home. And then additionally, some of the additional benefits there, the longer the blower's on, the more it's, it's cleaning the air. The longer the blower's on, the more even keel the temperature is mm-hmm. throughout the home. There's, there's additional, you know, the, the benefits abound. Then when we talk about the actual performance of the components, the raw components inside the system, it's similar to a vehicle. A vehicle is made to run. Mm-hmm. It's it's turning it off and turning it back on again that that actually creates more of an issue, you know, in the, mm-hmm. the life expectancy right. with the starter, things of that nature. It's it's similar in in your your HVAC equipment. So there may a, a motor is made to run. It's it's made to continue to push forward, which is both your compressor and your blower motor. They are made to move. Mm-hmm. So the constant turning on and off and you know back and forth over and over again, that's what creates wear and tear long term. Uh, so minimizing that aids in all of the benefits that the homeowner receives as well as overall performance and, and reliability of that equipment. Right. The other thing to think about is, um, is the energy side of the equation because even whenever you have to start up the the system you know the inrush everything else that um, occurs in that process it also makes it less energy efficient as well right versus just being able to throttle way down and be put on cruise control and just just right. go yeah so when looking at humidity control let's say we got a home in houston yeah you know humidity is absolutely horrendous down there and we we just want we, we we have a homeowner that's really looking for just good dehumidification let's say they're from phoenix and you know how much dehumidification can i squeeze out of a system they want an, an, an infinity would it be possible to uh, add a dehumidifier on top of that absolutely yeah and the the, the carrier line of of dehumidifiers is a great addition and has the the capability already built in to send the information back to that wall control. Uh, so it has the, the taps on it to connect so that it is communicating with the rest of the system. Uh, but but absolutely, yeah, so dehumidifiers are, are certainly a great addition to an okay. infinity system. Yeah, so we would have to pay a little bit more attention to ductwork, um, depending on how we run you know, the supply and return of the, the dehumidifier, but okay. All right, so if we're looking at um, an infinity system, what type of add-ons are available to, uh, for homeowners? Yeah, so uh, one of the one of the primary things, you know, since we've just talked about duct work and we've we've talked about zoning, one of the the really key pieces to focus on is, you know, if if you've you've got a customer who either in a previous home had an infinity system and we're used to that already, or um, you, you've just done a really great job of explaining the benefits and, and they're ready to, to move forward with putting in that infinity system. Uh, again, we talked about the importance of doing your due diligence at the very beginning of the process of making sure ductwork is, is adequate, all of the things. Mm-hmm. Um, this is, again, especially true. So moving from, you know, being able to explain those differences of longer run times, uh, does not necessarily does not equate to I'm paying more from an energy perspective. Um, being able to communicate that uh, you're you're creating that that more even keel temperature throughout the home to again to bring down some of the the thought once they actually get it into their home and are experiencing it in person. But additionally, when you're installing, if you're pulling out a single stage piece of equipment and putting in an infinity system. Make sure you're you, you fully are 100% up to speed on what that ductwork system looks mm-hmm. like because chances are that's the same ductwork that was put in when the house was built. <laughs> no one's ever looked at it. It was oversized or mm-hmm. undersized to begin with, yep. and we've just been throwing new boxes at it since you know since it was built. So 
One of the big differences while this system is operating, again, it's maintaining temperature. So say a tri-level home, two, you know, two floor house with a, a basement mm -hmm. below grade. Your equipment sits in the basement. System is not zoned in any way, shape or form. Where's your thermostat normally go? Probably on that first floor. <clears throat> in a uh, single stage or even two stage type of system, probably not a, a huge concern because it's gonna come on, you know, especially as it gets warmer outside, it's gonna come on full blast and turn off. And it's gonna do that more frequently throughout the summer as it gets hotter and hotter. Again, from a variable speed perspective, it's maintaining a baseline of, you know, if you have it set to 70, it's trying to stay at 70. It's doing that with less energy, so it's not coming on nearly as strong and it's staying on much longer at a much lower rate of speed. So the extremities of the home where it's the absolute warmest are going to struggle to maintain temperature. So that was a, a primary example. You know, if you're going from a single stage to, to this fully communicating variable speed uh, infinity system, I would strongly consider having that conversation and, and determining is zoning possible in the home? Is the ductwork set up to where I can access and be able to put in the, the dampers appropriately before saying this is the system for you? But again, from a being the professional, you, you're going to have to be able to look at the system, understand you know all the complexities that are there, and then at the end of the day, offer offer the best possible situation to meet the needs of the customer. All right, man, this is this has been great, um, very informative. Uh, is there is there anything that we're missing? Like uh, anything that the the we'd like to? Uh, do you think we got it all covered? You know, I think this this was a a, a great conversation for sure, a, a great first step. You know, I think, you know, from the infinity perspective, it's it goes far beyond humidity. It goes far beyond efficiency. It go, I mean, it, it truly is the system that will um, deliver the ultimate comfort to the customer. Yeah. And it's it's kind of the gift that that not only keeps on learning, but keeps on giving. Uh, so it's it's truly maintaining the the comfort desired levels of that homeowner the longer it runs the smarter it gets like we've talked about and so you know I, I think that you know being able to have those conversations at the kitchen table um, as as we're talking about the different options that are available uh, being able to to go back and and look at some of this at, at some of the pieces that you may not have known uh, it is going to be key to to continuing to to grow as far as the infinity system is concerned Man, this this has been wonderful. Um, yeah, I really appreciate you know your time uh, today, and uh, I actually look forward to doing this again at some point, hopefully. Absolutely. So, Anytime. All right. So, see you guys. <laughs>